Would you prefer your harvesting in Crowfall to be less like this, and maybe a little more like this? Well, if so, you're watching the wrong video. But if you're interested in getting your harvesting to a point where maybe it resembles something a little more like this, then we can probably help. In this video, we'll be going in depth about beginning harvesting in Crowfall. You know, just in case you maybe accidentally click past one or maybe more of those important text bubbles in the tutorial that you definitely should have read. There are quite a few other good guides out there for harvesting already, but I wanted to get a little more detailed about what beginners will face when learning how the system works in Crowfall because it's so different. Uh, for a more advanced guide, you can check out Crusaders, I've linked his in the description below. If you like the video, be sure to push all the buttons down there, and if you're new to the channel, we're doing donations to animal shelters at every major subscriber interval. Uh, we're getting closer every day to 500, and we'll do a $100 donation to the Arizona Humane Society, uh, which is a local dog and cat shelter, and a special video to mark the occasion. Uh, lastly, if you're interested in a discount on a Crowfall package or purchase, just look for the URL in the description. Alright, on to the harvesting. To give you an idea of what you're up against, the gathering progression in Crowfall is not anything like other games, so it takes some time to get used to. The system is not based on linear advancement of a gathering skill, but rather advancing the items you're wearing to increase your overall ability to gather. Once you can wrap your head around the idea of leveling your gear and items instead of leveling your character's skill, things get a bit easier to grasp as they come. For the record, I will not be touching on what races or classes go best with each harvesting discipline, as that'll be in a more advanced video later on. Moving on to the five basic types of gathering, uh, there's mining, which produces ores and utilizes a pick, quarrying, which produces stone and utilizes a hammer, Skinning, which produces hide and utilizes a skinning knife. Logging, produces wood and utilizes an axe. And then finally, grave digging, which produces body parts and utilizes a shovel. I would caution beginners to take a long look at necromancy prior to investing time and resources into grave digging. It's not really an easy crafting skill for solo beginners, even with as cool as it sounds due to some of the requirements being locked behind group content. Uh, the same goes for jewel crafting, which requires a partner to mine mother loads. Once you decide what you're going to gather, you'll need to get your discipline. The tutorial shows you how to do this, but in case you haven't gotten there yet, the vendor is in the Earth Temple. Just look for the exploration vendor. The disciplines here are considered common and do two main things for you at the beginning. They allow you to equip an intermediate tool of that discipline type, and they enable energetic harvesting. The first bit is very important because equipping intermediate tools allows you to have a small chance to find a better discipline when harvesting nodes of that discipline's type. This is what our first immediate goal is, to locate an uncommon discipline, and I'll get into why shortly. For now, your next step is to craft a few intermediate harvesting tools. To do this, you'll need some basic versions, and then find a rune-making crafting station. The intermediate tools only require three ore, three ethereal dust, and the corresponding basic tool to craft. If you get a flawed assembly, don't worry about it too much, it's not that big of a deal at this level. I recommend crafting at least two to three, because you go through these pretty fast if you're focusing purely on gathering, and we're going to be going through a lot of nodes very soon. I know you guys want to hit stuff really bad, so let's get out there and break some stuff. If you look at the tool you've equipped, it indicates that you need to be in a PvP area in order to have the chance for disciplines to drop from nodes, since you're likely in the starting area world. Uh, essentially, this means any area beyond the fort entry safe zones in your faction's map or sky point will work. Uh, each of the faction maps has three forts leading out of the rune gate, which kind of form a barrier protecting the area from PvP. You have to go beyond this barrier to have any chance of getting a discipline from a node. Before you start, there are some things I need to warn you about. You can be killed in these areas, unless you have an RGB gaming chair. Uh, you will drop half of your gold in the faction map areas and all of your gold in Sky Point. So, don't bring gold, and if you farm any, be sure to find a bank on the map and deposit any significant amount regularly. So, now we're just going to start chopping down these happy little trees and we'll talk about how energetic harvesting works. Each time you contact the node with your tool, 
you'll gain a pip, which is shown on the wheel in the bottom right. You can spend these pips to gain abilities, which will help make your harvesting more efficient. Uh, you'll need to go into your K menu and make sure that the energetic harvest ability is assigned to your hotbar, and then just press whatever hotkey you have to spend your pips. You can also hover over the ability in your K menu for an explanation about what each pip spent will get you. One pip increases your base harvesting stat for 8 seconds. Your base stat and all your other harvesting stats for that matter can be found in the details area of your character sheet under the explore tab. This stat affects the mitigation of the node you're hitting. In other words, the higher your skill in this area, the more damage you do to the node. Uh, two pips increases something called Spot Weakness, a stat which increases the likelihood that you gain a chance to find a weak point in the node, which allows you to do increased damage to it if you find that spot and hit it. The extra damage is based on your Exploit Weakness stat, which is right there on the detail screen as well. Three pips increases your harvest base damage for six seconds, or two hits, whichever comes first. 4 pips increases the effectiveness of any other energetic harvest ability for 8 seconds, and then finally, 5 pips is just a flat stamina recharge. I would encourage you to find a combination you like yourself, but honestly with these low level nodes it doesn't matter a whole bunch. The timing can be kind of tricky, so it takes some getting used to, but if you're not sure what to do, um, I tend to stick with a 4, and then 1, and then 2 rotation, but there's nothing wrong with spamming 3 either. While you're looking at nodes, it's a good time to go over what separates each node in terms of rank and Plentiful Harvest. Uh, Plentiful Harvest is a scale between 1 to 5 rhombuses, and the higher this scale is, the more material will drop from that node in general. You can increase the amount on Plentiful Harvest by upgrading your discipline, or by using foods or potions. You get plus 1 at Uncommon, plus 2 at Rare, plus 3 at Epic, and then plus 4 at Legendary. Uh, this is the main reason we're farming right now to upgrade your discipline is to increase this stat. The rank of the node is not something you can change with gear and is on a scale from 1 to 10. This is what determines the chances for rare drops. Uh, so if you have a high rank node and a high plentiful harvest, life is good. Uh, conversely, if you have a node that is low level, it will drop potentially poor quality resources as opposed to common or higher, and these resources are not used for much beyond, say, beginner tools or weapons, and those low rank nodes generally are found around the Earth Temple, or your faction temples. For the record, you can only find up to rank 6 nodes in the starting worlds, and most of those nodes are in Sky Point, uh, which is the most dangerous area of the starting world, of course. The nodes on the faction maps tend to be a bit lower, between 4 and 5 generally. So let's take a look at what a normal yield looks like with no bonuses to Plentiful Harvest, and then compare what it looks like with Plentiful Harvest at what you would see with a blue disc, for example, or two consumable buffs. Uh, as you can see, the yield is much higher. Uh, this increases your chance for all the rare resources as well as your disc dropping, you may want to look into crafting or purchasing these to expedite your harvesting grind. I'll stop short of explaining fully how they work or how to create them since there are many different variations based on the harvesting discipline, but I'll put a link to their recipes down in the description below. I should note that while you're out there harvesting, it's important to keep in mind that within each category there are five different types of resources within each node type. Uh, for example, with wood, there's oak, yew, birch, spruce, and ash trees, um, each with different stats that they will add to crafting items. So if you're also crafting and looking for specific stats on items, you'll want to look into what types of resources have those stats. I'll place a link to our guild spreadsheet which has each resource's attributes listed by crafting discipline to help you understand what resource subtype adds what attributes. Finding a green discipline should take somewhere between 15 to 45 minutes of farming. There's a mechanic in the game which slowly increases your probability of drop if you're getting unlucky and haven't found one in what the game would consider to be an acceptable period of time based on your drop chance. So if you're one of those guys that ends up farming for hours trying to find something that someone else seems to have found in 5 to 10 minutes, don't worry, you'll get one, just keep at it. Once you have it, uh, you have to go back to the Earth Temple to equip it. Uh, drag your old disc out into your inventory and place the new one in. Sacrifice or sell the old common one since you don't need it anymore. But you will want to keep any and all greens you find from this point out, and we'll go over why shortly. 
After you equip your green discipline, you'll notice that it gives you additional stats, and on top of that, it opens up your toolkit slot. Head over to the Exploration Discipline vendor and purchase your toolkit. It's 2500 gold at the time of this video, and the toolkit allows you to find rare resources used in advanced recipes. It also increases your base harvesting stat, which, as we already know, decreases the node's ability to mitigate your damage. We've got a good base, and we're able to generate a much better yield now when we're harvesting. It's time to talk a little bit more about that progression I mentioned earlier. Your next order of business is to further upgrade your discipline in order to further improve your ability to harvest. Essentially, that's what you'll spend all your harvesting time doing if you're not looking for specific resources to craft items. You're continually upgrading your discipline until you get to purple, and then you focus on upgrading your belt. Thankfully, after you do this the first time, the process doesn't change beyond just the rarity of the materials you're putting into it. So, press J and go to your upgrade menu. To upgrade a discipline, it shows you need three domination dust, which you can just get from the disciplines vendor. They cost 4k each. You'll then need three soul essence, which is a little more tricky. You've got to locate and kill thralls for these. Thralls are those ghosty looking dudes you probably killed a few of in the tutorial. You did do the tutorial, right? <laughs> the only problem is they only spawn at night in the real world, as opposed to whenever the hell you get to them in the tutorial. Uh, they do drop the essence in decent quantities though, so it should only take you one or two kills. The last part is you'll need two more green disciplines. Yeah, sorry, you gotta go out there and smash more nodes. But at least you get them faster now with your fancy toolkit and plentiful harvest increase. Again, if you want to speed it up, get some food or potions or both. Uh, once you have those extra two, you can just remove the one you have equipped currently and use it to craft your new discipline. Well, there you have it, a rare discipline. Uh, I recommend continuing this process until you arrive at your epic or purple discipline, which will allow you to equip the next tier of tool. Uh, you'll need a rune maker to get it for you, but by the time you get there, you're probably going to have enough cash to buy an EK vendor if you're playing solo, or you might have some buddies that can make it for you. Um, upgrading your toolkit is a similar experience, with the main difference being it requires 9 disciplines and 5 domination dust with each upgrade, but they do not have to be any better than green each time. In other words, if you want to make a blue or purple toolkit, you only need green disciplines, not blue or purple. So you can still get that done relatively easily, it just takes a lot of grinding. Well, there you have it. You're now a pro at harvesting and you've got your short-term goals. You can simply rinse and repeat your upgrade process to progress your ability to harvest and eventually you'll be swimming in materials.